welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today we're going to talk to you about a more traditional way of marking your quilts and getting your quilting done. Now I have pounce chalk which was used for decades and some stencils here that I've purchased. Now I've got the old-fashioned plastic ones which I like. I like these. I think they're great. And then I have the newer Ooh, exciting ones that are, they're more flexible and you can actually wash them when they get dirty, right? Well, you can wash the hard plastic ones as well, but so first off, first thing we're going to show you how to do, we're going to show you how to fill your pounce pad because people either fill it up really easy and they have no problem with it or they make a huge mess. So we're going to avoid the huge mess. So come along a little closer. We're going to show you how to, to uh, get this done. Okay, so here's, here's how you fill your pounce, your pounce, uh, your chalk pounce pad. Now this pad, you, you have to fill this little box, the reservoir in this box enough so that you can get the chalk to come out the top, right? So what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you how to do this. You just pull off your little lid. Now, Usually there's two kinds of chalk you'll find in quilt stores, the white and the blue. The white will iron off, right, or dust off with your hand. The blue does not. And the blue doesn't tell you to use an iron or anything. Now, I've had problems in the past with blue, not getting the blue, being able to get the blue off. But if I iron it, it's permanent. So do not iron, if you get the blue, don't iron it. So we, we won't be using that today. So we're going to just use the white for now. I like the white. I should probably get some more of this white. But... So anyway, so it comes in a little bag with a Ziploc thing. And so you open it up. Now, this is going to make a mess. There's two bags. There's one bag inside the bag. Right? So you try and... You try and get not to make too much of a grand mess. I'm probably going to need a paper towel. Maybe I should ask my husband for a paper towel. And you just try and take out a bit at a time. And it sticks. Okay. And we don't need a lot to get going. Here, I'll just get another... I'll just get another spoonful in there, just to make sure. Ugh, there's fluff everywhere now. Between the thread and the cotton batting fluff and this. Yeah, I'll be spending my hours cleaning. Okay, so now you got this thing full and it does sink down. Okay, well, I'm just going to get this, oops, moved. Okay. Oh, okay, now we're just going to push this in place, okay, there we go, now it's pushed in place, you haven't made too much of a big, big mess, I mean, you've got chalk on a few things, but that's okay, but now you're going to spread it out, so what you're going to do is you're going to just keep pounding it like that very gently, just gently shake it. What you're trying to do is prime that brush underneath here with chalk. And you'll see that all of a sudden, when the first time you do this, you, you pound a lot. Because there's no chalk already left in your, in your block. So I think now, when I'm looking at that, it looks like it's primed and ready to swipe. So what we're going to do is going to just put this to the side for now. And we're going to pick our stencil. Now... The stencils we have, okay, so the, these ones are nice and soft, but you must use like chalk pounce with them, right? So it's, they're going to be very lovely and very easy. And it, when you look at them, you don't think there's anything, but it's really fine little openings that is in that white line. And you, the pounce chalk will go through it and you'll get a lovely little marking on it. Now, this is for a border, 
This is for a border. So this one, where I just wanted you to see this. They do have registration lines as to where to line them up to get the pattern so you can keep moving along your quilt. So, but the, the ones I like are the old fashioned stencil, plastic stencil ones. This one's actually my favorite. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our block that we're gonna work on and see if that will fit. So it's pretty small, you wanna center it and you, you see that it's pretty small, like it's not getting all the, reaching all the way out. We can do just a simple little meander and it will cover the block. Basically now the block is, is covered in, enti in its entirety, right? So this one might be more suitable because of the size. So what we're gonna do, okay, I'm gonna move this out just a bit. Hopefully you can see this better. What I'm gonna do is, I'm just going to take my chalk pad and swipe and swipe and swipe. Now I'm going to pound it a little bit more and hopefully we can see whether we've got lines. I think we got a few lines there. Okay, so we're going to swipe the other way. Swipe and swipe. There we go, those bent, but they're fine. Okay, so you don't pounce on here, right? Because that would be, you're leaving too much powder. So we're gonna see now if we've got any ball spots. So, and no, we can pretty much see all those lines. I don't know if you can see the lines very well. So I'll give it another, another bit. Let's see if you can see those lines. I'm sure you can see those, right? So anyways, we'll take this off and we'll now get this under our sewing machine. So the line starts about here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring my bobbin thread up first. And this just becomes a matter of following the line. Now, if you, if your chalk pad, or if your uh, template has uh, moved, you're going to have a double line. So it's a matter of, like this is the meander template. So now you've just got to figure out, okay, which one am I going to decide what I'm going to do? Maybe we should get wait and get a better shot of the quilt I'm, uh, the block I'm quilting. Okay, I've already bought my brought my bobbin up, my bobbin thread up. Now I'm using a 40 weight. Uh, polyester, yellow polyester thread on the top and I've got an Aerofil yellow on the bottom so I don't have to worry about my stitches bottom bobbing through. So I'm just going to make a quick little line. Now as I'm looking at this there's some of this that I have double lines on. So I'm just going to try and do my best and hope for the best. After all, it's a meander pattern. And you do what you can. thread broke. Okay, hang on. We'll have to fix that. Okay, we fixed our thread. <laughs> I'm not sure why it broke, but it broke. Oh, you just go back and you fix it just a little bit. Now, because I've been touching this and trying to get thread out, I'm beginning to lose some of my chalk. That's the problem with chalk, right? I mean, it's beautiful, it's quick, but the reality is I have no idea what this design now should look like until I get up to the closer to the top. And the more I touch it, the more it disappears. Okay, 
Well, I'm gonna get rid of this thread because it's bugging me. Okay. Now, hopefully, I have still got chalk path over there. But this is a meander design, so let's see. because I've rubbed off so much chalk. The chalk is gone, right? Essentially, right now, the chalk is gone. It, it's not even coming out on my hand anymore. Now let me just finish tying it off, and we'll see what it looks like on the back. There. Okay, so when I turn this over, let's see. So that's what it looks like on the back right now. Hopefully is that lined up in the center? There. So that's what it looks like now from the back. It looks okay. It's, you know, it's got a few little wobbles and, and divots and whatnot. But, you know, like I say, once I, my thread broke and I had to start flipping it back and forth to cut threads and pick out stuff and all the rest of my chalk is gone. <laughs> so it happens to all of us. So I've got one more thing to show you what I use and how to quilt. And what do you think of this so far? Okay, so we did our one little square here. And it didn't take long to do a square with pounce chalk and a stencil. There's so many stencils right now that are on the market. I mean, if you want to pick yourself up one or two, you know, go for it. It's really, a, they're really a lot of fun. And it is a learning experience and a learning curve to use them. Um, if I put this up against a stencil, probably it's not going to match, but that's close. And it's a meander stencil. Meanders are supposed to be meandering. So that's all fine. I want to tell you though about a shout out. Oh my goodness. Bonnie Hunter from Quiltville put out her pattern and she's calling it Bitcoin. And it is just the, the best the, the best of the best that I've ever seen her put out. I just couldn't believe it. It was so beautiful. I had a bucket of one and a half inch strips, cut strips, that I could no longer close. I couldn't close the lid on it because it was just overwhelmed. So I decided, I took one look at that pattern and I decided I'm going to go for it. Do you want to see what I've made? I have to show you. I didn't buy her pattern, but I'm going to put a link in our show notes below so that you can go check out what I'm talking about and maybe look at buying her pattern. But this is what I made, being inspired by her. So let me show you. I've got two of them here. So the first one, they're both twins and they're both going for charity quilts. So the first one, oops. Okay, so this is the long side. Wait a minute. Okay, here we go. Here we go. The first one is this. No. Oh. What do you think of that? I'd love to hear your comments on this. And this is all my non with the fabric one and a half inch strips. And this is the other one. And the rectangles go the other way. So what do you think of these? Aren't they gorgeous? Aren't they just colorful, happy, gorgeous? Won't they make a fun charity quilt? Anyways, I'd love to hear your comments. I would love to hear your comments in the show notes below. Please, please, please let us know what you think. Um, Bonnie Hunter has been, I've been a fan of Bonnie Hunter for years and years. So this is where I'm, you know, heading a shout out to her. 
Um, we are having a sew along this starting December of 2020, 2021, and it's going to be for hand sewers and uh, sewing machines. So I hope you join us on that too. But anyways, have a great day. Have a lot of fun. This was so inspiring for me. So anyways, have a, have a great one. Bye. Hello everyone, just a quick reminder, this is the quilt we're going to start doing our sew along in the beginning of December 2021. This is a beautiful hand pieced, hand quilted. Uh, this is a beginner quilt for hand quilting. This is also an intermediate if you're using a sewing machine. And we're going to start this one at the beginning of December 2021. So if you're watching this eight years from now, don't worry, it's a free pattern. It'll always remain a free pattern. Um, we had a lot of fun doing this with our students and we had a very enjoyable time. So, if you like the videos and you like this challenge and you'd like to start a quilt, a quilt along, comment below, but like, share, and subscribe with your friends. We are so happy that you're back with us if you're a, a subscriber. But if you're a new subscriber, please join. This is going to be so much fun. Okay, you have a great day. Bye.